I've always say when I start my classes in the early quarter, things don't matter until it hits home front. It's just like war. They happen in Syria, not to my people. Somebody they die in car accident. That's somebody, never my family. So then it takes a lot of issues that happen to me and thousands of cuts. They in and out that make me say, I have had enough. I have had enough that I got to speak up. So there's always this assumption of being normal. And of course, then in my early years, when I graduated with my PhD degree, when I was 27, it's like, yeah, it's not my problem. Part of this learning about being in the work of social justice and be able to boldly confront it, I think it takes that fire, that emotions. So there was this time that I brought my son to playground and he was eight. As I was walking toward the swing, trying to put him down. There was this, I would say six, seven year old white boy who started singing. Yellow, yellow, yellow is here. I couldn't explain what was so overwhelming and what was so upsetting that I just picked up my baby and left and I drove home crying. And my husband asked me, what happened at the playground? Why was it only five minutes? That was a time that I came back, back in academia and said to myself, if I were to teach something, it's no longer teaching people to assimilate and be competent according to some sort of a standard, but really to teach people to stand up and speak for other people who don't have the privilege and other people who ha don't have the voice. So it's this experience that gave me the fire to say that I want to go back. It drains you, it drains your soul. It hurts you and it takes an emotional toll on you as a person of color. That not only I got to teach this and present myself to students, but when I go to grocery stores, there'll be people asking my family and I the question, so what are you guys going to do in Canada this afternoon? I would have to... <sighs> so, which part of this that tells you that I'm a Canadian? Or uh, lining up in grocery store trying to buy fish with my two children standing next to me. There's, there's a white woman, and then the person just asked the white woman, so what can I get for you? I will be, okay, my children are watching. I got to say something. So I say, excuse me, sir. You've just cut me. Did you not see me with my two children? Now you probably can hear this anger in my voice. Well, where do I channel that anger and that sadness? My job has given me the privilege that I have nothing to lose when I talk about issues like this. So I think that in order to live a meaningful life, in order to be able to, at the end of my life, to look back, what have I done? I'm able to say, I have done something for my own children. I've done something for people who look like me and for children who look like me. And that's the time that I stood up and say, regardless what kind of pain and what kind of obstacles that I'm gonna face, I will just keep fighting. Now, as I told you, it, it is a pain to fight and it's a long, arduous process. Um, is it worth fighting? I will probably not be able to see the end results by the end of my lifetime. But if it's for future generations, I think that there's this innate instinct among humans that we got to survive and we got to hope for the best. And this is why I'm here and this is what I do. Thank you.